Welcome my friends back to Marvel Snap. We have an incredible deck to break down in a guide today, one that I have been testing extensively started on a stream before and this deck is so good it feels like cheating. Shuri is here to be able to abuse the high stat lines of the zero to hero archetype. We are running Shuri, Luke Cage, and She-Hulk really trying to leverage the higher series collection that this account has been able to find. If you guys don't have these cards don't worry we're going to talk side deck at the end of the video. Common substitutions that you can bring in to still be able to leverage these powerhouse cards because the heart of the list is really the Taskmaster, the Red Skull, and the Zero. Our goal is to be able to play a few incredibly high powered cards and then be able to win despite negative abilities. Uh, She-Hulk, you would say, have a, has a positive ability, though her stat line is not desirable until you're able to leverage that ability. So we have our big boys in Typhoid Mary. Ongoing your other cards have minus one power. The Red Skull. Ongoing enemy cards at this location have plus two power. And then the She-Hulk that we need to be passing energy on the previous turn to be able to play her at a stat line that is desirable. Well, that is before we take into account Shuri. Shuri on reveal double the power of the next card that you play. Who cares if we're debuffing our other cards by one if she's a 20 point card or if the opponents are getting plus two power if Red Skull is a 30 point card or even if you're going to play six energy for the max expense She-Hulk if you're able to get 20 points out of her and then copy this buff with the Taskmaster, the Zola would be another route that you could take, but I prefer the flexibility on the Taskmaster here, and then the rest of the cards are able to facilitate ex enhancing the list, giving us the consistency if we don't draw our ideal plays. Sunspot is here because we want to pass some excess energy to be able to discount the She-Hulk. The Zero is here to be able to remove those negative abilities on both the Typhoid Mary and the Red Skull. Hazmat is getting run just because we are deciding to run Luke Cage, basically the Daisy Chain is, if we're running Typhoid Mary, other cards have minus one power, then we want to run Luke Cage to be able to take that negative effect away, even if we don't play the zero on the Typhoid Mary. Then if we're running Luke Cage, we might as well play the Hazmat, because as a two drop, she's quite efficient if she's going to be debuffing all of the opponent's cards, but none of our own. And because Luke Cage is ongoing, he will be able to re repair... He's able to undo any effects of the hazmat, even if the hazmat got played early, you can play Luke Cage at the end and be able to bring all your cards back up to full power. The Shuri here is to be able to combo with either the Red Skull, the She-Hulk, or the Typhoid Mary. And then, of course, the Taskmaster is the extra finisher. Our final cards rounding out the list are both the Shang-Chi and the Enchantress, giving us control against the opponent. But we are really able to abuse it here because Red Skull could buff opposing cards above 9, and then the Shang-Chi will be able to have more targets to destroy. We have the Enchantress to be able to turn off either the Typhoid Mary or the Red Skull. And then we have the Magic just to give us an extra time in the game to be able to line up control against the opponent or find the combo of the cards that we want to lay down. Let's dive in here to get a gameplay showcase. I love, love running this list right now. We've got the deck list up above. This, I think, is the optimized deck list for this archetype of a deck. Though we are at the end of the video going to talk about side deck and different swap in, swap out options if you're missing any of these cards. We're just going to full pass here. We have the zero. We want to be able to combo the zero. We have the Shuri. We have Shuri's lab. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We'll be able to double with Shuri and then double again. And if we can find the Taskmaster, it's lights out. Warrior Falls also works very well for this. Obviously, Shuri helping us alongside the Wakandan locations where high power cards are king. All right. I'll full pass again. Put more power on the sunspot. Now, here we get into a little bit of an interesting situation. We can play the She-Hulk for three and then the zero if we draw into Red Skull. We did not draw into Red Skull. I still kind of like the idea, though, of just being able to drop the She-Hulk zero. She goes up to 20. We could also play the Shuri and hope that we draw into either Typhoid Mary or Red Skull. What is better? What is better? Probably just playing the She-Hulk. Though then, I would wonder if I want to play Zero instead first. I think we will. They get the Swordmaster. A lot of different balancing acts in the combos of is Zero going to help you by nullifying the next card? Is he going to actually hurt you if he nullifies the next card? In this case, we're able to get the doubling effect 
and now we would be able to play magic to remove the mindscape. Alternatively, we could keep the mindscape and hope that taking their hand is advantageous to us. We did get the Typhoid Mary. We could play Typhoid Mary. Here's the thing. I like the Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is going to let us win uh, Shuri's Lab, certainly. So let's throw in the magic. I don't want to give the opponent the Shang-Chi either. That's, that's, that's really the kicker, is that if the opponent was to grab our Shang-Chi out of the Mindscape, then we would be kissing the 20-point She-Hulk goodbye. I, I certainly do not want to do that yet. Opponent has snapped. What makes them so confident? Are you a discard list that actually runs control? Normally a discard list does not run control. We have the Morbius scaling. And a big Swordmaster and a big Colleen Wing. There goes the Ghost Rider. What do you have in hand? Your most expensive card was a Ghost Rider? And then the Blade is not able to destroy anything? Oh, they were anticipating the, the Mindscape. Yes, yes, yes. They were curating their hand already to give me nothing. Effectively. There it is. Ooh, magic is a little location fixer kicker. Extra flexibility for the list. It must be said with this list, how well does it combat the leech leader shenanigans that everybody in the ladder seems to be running right now? Honestly, the list does okay. It's a bit of a mixed bag. The leader being able to copy our strong bodies. The impact of the leader really heavily depends on who has the initiative. Taking the Taskmaster, is, does the Taskmaster already have the power of our strongest card, or are they going to be um, copying one of their previous cards, and then we should be gaining a lot more advantage out of the Taskmaster? The Leech, it also depends heavily on what is in hand. If the Leech is taking away the Typhoid Mary or the Red Skull abilities, then we're quite happy. If it's hitting our Taskmaster so that we're not able to finish our combo, uh, then we're hurt quite a bit. We'll just pass, put some early power onto the Sunspot and then be able to play a very cheap She-Hulk to lead off our combo. I love that on turn four, you can play She-Hulk and Zero together to set up the Red Skull, and then you go into the rest of your turn, which would be uh, the Taskmaster right after that. And I feel like we're on track. All we need now is the Zero. Honestly, the Zero is optional, especially in this case, where the passing with the extra energy is four points onto Bar Sinister. Opponent playing Sunspot themselves makes me a lot less um, nervous about an incoming uh, Killmonger, who, who we were certainly vulnerable to in setting up the Sunspots, but I felt like the Sunspot was the, the right way to go. I don't know. She-Hulk will be able to punch through Necrotia. Now, the ne Crimson Cosmos cares about the card's current cost, so we're actually not able to get She-Hulk into there. But now... <laughs> uh, so many Sunspots, it's incredible. We can bring the Taskmaster across. So we've got we've got options, right? We could play Shuri to double the Taskmaster or the Red Skull, or we could play Red Skull and then the Taskmaster to be able to copy. So the Shuri will produce 30 points on the Red Skull. The Red Skull and then Taskmaster combo produces 30 points as well, um, but it allows us to distribute them a, a little bit more piecemeal. The Shuri Red Skull gives us one extra energy to overflow on the sunspots. Alright, I sold myself. We'll go Shuri Red Skull. Now what I know. How big are they gonna be? 11 pointers? Pretty good, pretty good. Do you have a way to be able to buff those boys? Otherwise, I will catch them. If they play a single card, they lose 8 points at Bar Sinister. And then we are gaining a lot of power. We'll go Red Skull here. Now, normally I would go 0 plus Red Skull, but with all the sunspots depending on us for the extra energy. We'll hold on. So we're going to go up to 36. Does the opponent have a list that's going to feed the Devil Dino and still be able to pass us anywhere? I don't know. It's an uphill battle at Necrotia. They need a big card there. What do they have? Moon Girl. Moon Girl plus the two on the Sunspot. Oh, it's so close on the opponent's side. Cool. 
She Hulk holds strong. Victory. The Zero Typhoid Mary, Red Skull, Enchantress. So we can have Zero take away the ability from one of these. Enchantress take away the ability from the other. And be quite uh, quite well equipped. Drop the sunspot here. This is this is the line. We full pass on three. On four, play She-Hulk into zero, and then you play the Red Skull, which gets zeroed out, and then you have turn six, uh, with just tremendous power on board. I can comfortably snap just just looking at this lineup. Now we don't get to draw. I don't think that bothers me that much. We just pass. More power to the Sunspot. <laughs> They're playing Colossus. If they have a Killmonger, then all this early preparation of the extra power on the Sunspot is lost. But, um, Armor and Korg. My guess is with those three cards that they've shown us already, they don't have the Killmonger. I could be wrong. Drop the zero to answer the Colossus. It could get shot, but we have to take our risks if we want to put pressure on the opponent. We want to be able to spread our pressure... Because one of the ways that the deck fails is the opponent using arrow to be able to stack a lane that they're just choosing to sack, um, able to pull. Because we make on-curve plays with really big bodies, we need to keep the pressure up. And they play to the danger room. I really don't want to uh, play the Red Skull and then have it get shot. There's a lot higher stakes to play a 15-point card to Danger Room than a 3-point card to Danger Room. It's also our entire turn 5. This is the uh, Professor X. There we go. They do have the Professor X. On the read of it being the Professor X, we could have put the Red Skull there. Now, what is the opponent playing? The opponent is obviously going to play Destroyer. They can't win the hub with Destroyer. At Hell's Kitchen, they'll go up to 18 points. Well, it turns out... As it were, Typhoid Mary is larger. If they Shang-Chi, we still win because of the Sunspot? Ooh. No, wait, wait, wait. If they Shang-Chi, because the Typhoid Mary is going to be debuffing the Sunspot, uh, the Sunspot will be at 6. And they'll be at 5. Yeah, yeah, because we're getting 2. Yes. What do they have? What do they have? Destroyer. I have even more big cards. You can't stop it. <laughs> oh, you thought that I was gassed after I played She-Hulk Red Skull? No, no, no. Typhoid Mary, Taskmaster, we have even more in the tank. All right, here is the Shuri again. I would love to showcase the Shuri into Red Skull and a Taskmaster. We haven't had much on the Taskmaster side of things. This list... This list runs more finishers than two other lists, uh, opposing lists combined, usually. I could play the hazmat. I think I'm not going to. We'll wait. Let the opponent lay some more cards down. Sentinel, there we go. Frank 85. I played Frank so many times pre-release. I don't think that I've gotten matched up with him very much recently, though. Luke Cage opens the door, certainly, to dropping the hazmat. But then, if we were to play the hazmat, why not just play it later, at a later date, when they would be more impactful, and play the Luke Cage now? That's what I'm thinking. Cosmo, doesn't matter. Luke Cage is ongoing. Sunspot gets larger. And now we see what X-Mansion decides to give us. Opposing against Dagger. <laughs> oh, Valkyrie. Hang on. Why didn't Valkyrie change Sunspot? Is there a reason? Base 1, Sunspot 2, Sunspot 1. Valkyrie, on reveal, set all cards at this location to power 3. Valkyrie equal 3. Valkyrie equal 3. Where's my Valkyrie? Where's my Valkyrie equal 3 on that Sunspot, chat? <laughs> I'm not streaming. In the comments, help. Is this a bug? It feels bugged. Very disappointed. Actually, very disappointed. Uh, we'll play Shuri and hope for a good top deck. Now, it was... it The Valkyrie just helped them. It gave them three points. And me three points in the three-point body. But then the fact that it didn't level up the Sunspot. Aggravating. The opponent there was able to grab our magic. 
Maybe they'll play magic for us. Maybe not. Shuri is still on a doubling mission. And this is where we could get a little... Uh, a little saucy with it. You just full pass. The buff on Shuri from Shuri is still on the table. And She-Hulk is in hand as a one-cost card in the next turn. Yeah, your Devil Dinosaur is big, but is it a 20-point She-Hulk big? I didn't think so. We got the Red Skull too. 30-point Red Skull. Activate! She-Hulk for good measure. She-Hulk will not be able to win against the Devil Dino. The Red Skull is going to be able to stop anything with the Cosmo there. They can't even chain chi us. Uh, we snap. Frank, are you going to be a good sport about it? Do you want to see what I have concocted with my Shuri to be able to stop you? All he knows is that I had the magic. Bamps the Nightcrawler across, plays the leader, takes his own 15-point Red Skull, because apparently on the leader copy, you don't... The leader is just a whole thing to have to unwind. Victory. So the leader... No, that makes sense, that makes sense. Because they had initiative, the leader took the lower point Red Skull, and then we flipped, and we got the buff from the Shuri. If the initiative had actually been flipped, and we had revealed first, leader would copy the Red Skull with the buff alongside. And then we were just ahead by one point. What a match. Here is the deck list in all of its glory. Now, as promised, let's talk side deck. So common substitutions. Obviously, obviously, in this list, we're leveraging some very high series cards. We have the Luke Cage, the Shuri, and the She-Hulk that are all very hard to come by right now with how much they're just dribbling out the collector tokens. Hopefully, this all changes, and some of these cards are also going to come down into Series 3 to be much more free-to-play accessible very soon. But in the meantime, if you guys like this Zero to Hero concept, the Zero, the Red Skull, the Typhoid Mary, the Shang-Chi, the Enchantress, and the Sunspot, I all see as core. Taskmaster is very good, not necessarily essential. To be able to round out your list then, you're looking at a couple other combo potentials here. The Venom is amazing. On reveal, destroy your other cards at this location, add their power to this card. Venom can consolidate the power at the single location and also do away with the detrimental abilities at that location. If you want to tech more into the full destroy lineup, then you could even justify running death if you start bringing in more destruction synergy cards. And of course, you're going to want to run the Zola to then destroy the Venom that's consolidated all the power and push them out to the other locations. The Zola is good anyway. Now, if Zola is hitting a card that has been zeroed, the copies will also be zeroed. So you don't have to worry about these detrimental abilities cropping back up. The Zola will maintain the status of the card as it was. Now, you can also look to be able to run a energy cheat, either the Electro or the Wave. I wouldn't run these both together, probably just pick one. And then you can do something like Shuri, Red Skull, and still have time for the, the Zola to come in, or a Taskmaster, and then a Zola. Gives you a lot of space in the gameplay, especially if you're running the Magic, um, to be able to fit in some of these very expensive finisher cards for this just obscenely high power. You can run Armor or Cosmo, of course, to be able to protect your big bodies from being destroyed themselves. And then the Captain Marvel is a very fun tech choice with Shuri, giving you a 12-point card that will go wherever it needs to be for you to win the game at the very end. That is so much better than a 6-point card trying to do the exact same job. And with how the deck has so many other ways to produce winning opportunities, you can stack one lane for a guaranteed win and then have the Captain Marvel as the flexibility to jump between the other two and you don't have to get lost in the mind game of, oh, where's the opponent playing? I have to match them or I have to counter them. It's just that the Captain Marvel is going to find the winning play. So here is actually an example and much more budget-friendly list that is running many of the same core cards. I've had incredible success with this list that I'm showing, well, the one above that you saw in the video today, and then the one in the corner here I've had great success with in the past as well. Teddy Ninja stamp of approval on both of these. Let me know how they serve you if you give them a try down in the comments below. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Keep on snapping.